is it? Some kind of cloak. Well, let's see them. Put it on. I think most people would find it hard to forget this scene from the first Harry Potter movie. When the invisibility cloak was first put on, one of the greatest childhood dreams instantly became having an invisibility cloak just like this one. This is footage of a pseudo-invisibility cloak that went viral on the internet several years back. Although it is in fact real, the setup relies on recording using a camera, as well as projection of the recording, which is reflected off a specialized material. Not quite what we imagine when we think of an invisibility cloak. As another interesting note, an article recently published in Science performed cloaking of small objects with an extremely thin cloak. However, the cloaking was performed with radio waves and was created in attempts to find new ways to evade radar. The project also had other complications. In any case, the general idea behind cloaking is to redirect light around an obstructing object in a way that the light reaches the observer in the same way that it would without the object being present. To show some basic principles behind some forms of cloaking, we will examine the Rochester cloaking device, a very simple device that uses lenses to bend light so that the object in front of the lens seems to disappear. The Rochester cloak depends on the basic properties of converging lenses and requires four lenses to work properly. According to the Rochester University's website, you can build your own Rochester cloaking device by setting up the lenses as shown. Identical lenses are placed on the outside, and another pair of identical lenses are placed on the inside. The lenses on the outside are separated by the sums of their focal lengths, and the inside lenses are separated by a distance of the second focal length times the sum of the two focal lengths, all divided by the first focal length minus the second focal length. The Rochester cloak has two components that allow it to work. Number one. The image on the back side of the lens is where the object actually is. In this case, the image of the hand is where the hand actually is. Two, objects placed within the end pairs of lenses cannot be seen within a range of angles. In this case, we are referring to the knife. The first component, the one that allows the image to appear where the object is, is ensured by the specifications of the setup. To demonstrate what is happening, we use the graphical method to show where the image forms for an object behind the set of lenses. Everything is drawn to scale and the light is directed from the left side where the object is. As you can see, due to the specifications of the first lens, the image of the object is inverted and greatly scaled down. Because the image lies within the focal length of the second lens, it is magnified. The third lens then inverts and scales down the image again. This image is within the focal length of the final lens, and so it is magnified, and the final image is located far behind the final lens, perfectly placed where the object actually is. The final magnification of the image is 1. Consequently, the image is placed exactly where the object would be seen if the lenses were not present, and is scaled to the same way as well. So, why is it that images placed between the outside pairs of lenses are not seen within a range of angles? If we use the graphical method for this as well, we can see what is happening. The object, in this case placed between the two lenses furthest to the left, creates an inverted image in the middle of the apparatus. The image is inverted again, but this time lies within the focal point of the final lens. Consequently, the final image is greatly magnified and is far above the line of sight of someone looking through this set of lenses. As the object moves nearer to the central axis, however, its image will as well. Eventually, it will be seen by the viewer. So this brings up the final yet important point about the Rochester cloak. The apparatus does not allow you to see through objects placed in the center axis, but rather has cloaked ring-shaped regions around the center axis. Although we did attempt to build our own Rochester cloak, the long focal lengths of the lenses and the variation in their sizes made it difficult to achieve the effect perfectly. However, the project is simple enough that we encourage you to give it a go if you're interested. Just don't expect otherworldly results. <laughs>